ओम ज्ञानतिमीरांदनांजनशलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील येना तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर In this session, we'll be discussing from the twenty-first verse of the eighth chapter of the first canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam, continuing the prayers by Queen Kunti. Krishna ya Vasudeva ya Devaki Nanda na ya cha Nanda Gopa Kumara ya Govinda ya Namo Namaha. The meaning of this verse is: Let me therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto the Lord who has become the son of Vasudeva. the pleasure of devaki the boy of nanda and the other cowherd men of vrindavan and the enlivener of the cows and the senses now every uh, name referred to by queen kunti is very meaningful so uh, krishnaya the supreme lord krishna who is vasudevaya he has appeared as the son of vasudeva therefore he is called vasudeva so kunti is identifying this personality who has appeared as son of vasudeva and therefore called vasudeva he is actually the supreme personality of god at krishna krishnaya vasudevaya devaki nandanaya cha he is also the Identified as the son of Devaki. Devaki, he appeared as the son of Devaki and Vasudeva. Devaki as his mother and Vasudeva as his father. So therefore, Devaki Nandana, another name for Krishna, is the same supreme Lord who has appeared as the son of Devaki and Vasudeva. He is not an ordinary uh, person. His birth is not ordinary. Uh, it is transcendental. Then. नंद गोप कुमाराय नंद गोप नंद महाराज वॉज द किंग ऑफ द कवर्ड मेन इन वृंदावन सो कृष्णा ऑल्सो अपियर्ड एज द सन ऑफ नंद महाराज एंड यशोदा मई एज द कवर्ड वुमन वुमन वाइफ ऑफ नंद महाराज इन वृंदावन सो ही इज ऑल्सो आइडेंटिफाइड एज नंद गोप कुमाराय कुमार मीन्स ए स्मॉल बॉय फाइव इयर ओल्ड बॉय सो कृष्णा अपियर्ड एज ए कवर्ड बॉय ऑल्सो एज अ सन ऑफ नंदा एंड यशोदा एंड ही इज गोविंदाय नमो नम गोविंद गोविंद मीन्स वन हु इज एनलाइवनर ऑफ द काउज एंड द सेंसेस दिस गो द वर्ड गो मीन्स द सेंसेस गो ऑल्सो मीन्स द काउज so the cows and senses are enlivened by krishna whenever the senses come in contact with krishna or the cows when they are uh, in touch with krishna they become enlivened that's why krishna as the covered boy is always tending the cows that's a a very very special relationship of love between krishna and the cows or between krishna and the devotees whose senses are very nicely engaged in devotional service to krishna because of it the senses become enlivened so shrila prabhupad explains in the purport that uh, the supreme lord as has been explained in the previous verse by kunti devi is unapproachable by any material assets 
whatever be the material qualification of any person in any position in this material world those material assets are useless when it comes to understanding the personality of krishna i may be a very great philosopher but that doesn't qualify me to know and understand the personality of krishna i may be the most charitable munificent person that doesn't qualify me to understand krishna i may be a very powerful devata that doesn't qualify me to understand krishna no material position is or material assets are a qualification for understanding krishna then how can krishna be understood he is uh, understood when out of his unbounded and causeless mercy he comes down to this earth as he is he comes in his original form when you say krishna he appears in his original form not that he is assuming a human like form no he is coming in his original form the original form resembles a human like form but it is not a human form it is not a material form it is not a human form and he does so just for the sake of showing his special mercy upon his pure devotees pure devotees krishna wants to show his causeless mercy huh? unbounded that means there is no limit to uh, how much mercy he showers on his pure devotees unlimited mercy and also he appears to uh, diminish the upsurges of the demoniac persons these demons they become too much uh, uh, troublesome uh, they want to create havoc in the life of uh, uh, religious people or <clears throat> saintly persons or law abiding citizens these demoniac persons they are law breakers they are against uh, god in general they are sometimes too materialistic or they are atheistic or they are openly against uh, uh, god like that so all such demoniac persons when they become too much of a disturbance and uh, they create too much trouble for the saintly persons for the devotees then krishna appears and vinashaya ch dushkrutam he destroys he kills them uh, and uh, uh, protects the devotees now shila prabhupad says queen kunti specifically adores the incarnation or descent of lord krishna above all other incarnations krishna appears in many many different incarnations rama varaha narsimha vamana etc etc but among all the incarnations of the supreme lord the one and only supreme lord the incarnation in his original form as he is the incarnation of krishna is the top most why because in this particular incarnation krishna is very easily approachable by everyone so prabhupad compares in the incarnation of rama he remained a king's son and from his very childhood but in the incarnation of krishna although he appeared as the son of a king son of king vasudeva he at once left the shelter of his real father and mother vasudeva and devaki and went to the lap of yashoda mai to play the part of an ordinary cowherd boy in the holy land of vrindavan and that vrindavan has become sanctified because of krishna performing his childhood pastimes there which are very 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 uh, pleasing uh, to all devotees 
Therefore, Krishna is more merciful than Rama. The incarnation of Krishna is more merciful than the incarnation of Rama. Why? In Vrindavan, everyone is devotee of Krishna. Everyone can approach Krishna. Not only the, uh, the parents of Krishna, Yashoda Mai and uh, Nanda Maharaj, but the covered boys, the cows, the peacocks, the birds, the bees, the river, Yamuna, the, uh, the trees, the plants, the insects, every creature in Vrindavan is able to directly approach Krishna and actually render service to him. In whatever way they can, they render service in their own way. And Krishna accepts it very, very mercifully. That is Krishna's greatness. So therefore, the scriptures declare Krishna's incarnation is the topmost. Because he is easily approachable by everyone. Now, uh, Srila Prabhupada also points out, Krishna was very kind to Kunti's brother Vasudeva because he appeared as the son of Vasudeva. Now, because he appeared as the son of Vasudeva, Kunti was able to uh, have that uh, affectionate relationship with Krishna as being Krishna's aunt, father, sister. Hmm? So, Kunti is able to address Krishna in paternal affection. These are all different kinds of relationships between the Supreme Lord and the uh, devotee. So, here Kunti is able to affectionately address Krishna as, uh, as uh, her relative. But Nanda and Yashoda are more fortunate because they could relish the childhood pastimes of Krishna, which Vasudeva, Devaki, Kunti, they could not relish. They could not relish the childhood pastimes of Krishna. And among the uh, childhood pastimes of Krishna, of course, all the childhood pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan are very special. Uh, they are described by Srila Prabhupada here as Prototypes of his eternal pastimes in original Krishna Loka. Krishna has, has got his personal abode in the spiritual world. That's called Chintamani Dhamma, Vrindavan Dhamma, Goloka Dhamma. Different names, same abode of Krishna, Krishna Loka. But that Krishna Loka, eternally Krishna's Pastimes is a covered boy are going on. And Krishna sometimes comes to this world to display those pastimes, the replica of those pastimes he enacts in this earthly planet in the tract of land called Rajabhumi. Rajabhumi, Gokula Vrindavan. So there are two Vrindavans, Goloka Vrindavan in the spiritual world and Gokula Vrindavan on this earth planet. But Gokula Vrindavan is not material, it is completely spiritual. Though ordinary I see it as a material, uh, another material place, but actually it is not a material place. Now Krishna comes to Gokula Vrindavana with all his spiritual entourage and paraphernalia. Now, Krishna's mother, Yashoda Mai, she also belongs to Krishna Loka. But she also comes. Nanda Maharaj, he belongs to Krishna Loka, but he also comes. The covered boys, uh, Sridham and uh, Madhu Mangala, all the covered boys, they belong to the spiritual world, but they also come with Krishna. That is for Krishna to display his uh, wonderful loving pastimes with all his devotees. 
and Krishna is inviting us, come, join me, come with me to Krishna Loka and enjoy pastimes like these covered boys are enjoying with me, like the uh, covered men and covered women, the eternal associates are enjoying. You also come, that's why Krishna comes to display and to, and to attract us and Krishna invites so many ways. So it is up to us to actually um, accept this invitation and actually prepare ourselves to uh, just what is that preparation? Become devotees. Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru. Chant Hare Krishna. Become devotee of Krishna and go to Krishna Loka. Never again to come to this world which is filled with miseries. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.